Last time, we began a scenario where Frieza ended up on Earth, due to some unfortunate circumstances. This ended up with him forgetting who he is, and becoming a new person. Now that he's meeting Goku, where do we go from here? We'll be seeing all that and more in the second part of What If Frieza Was Good. Talking more with Yulong, Goku realizes that this guy is really cool, and he seems incredibly powerful as well. Gohan mentions that this guy's actually the strongest person on Earth. So far, no one's been able to beat him, not even his masters. Yulong asks Goku if he remembers anything about transforming, and Goku remembers nothing. Interesting, because it seemed to greatly increase his power, but he completely forgets what happened. Roshi had told him about Gohan's kid. Just like him, Goku randomly appeared one day. At least for Goku though, he looks human enough so Gohan didn't really think anything of it. As for Yulong, he's clearly from somewhere else. But still, for some reason, Yulong feels like him and Goku, they should share some sort of similar origin. It's a weird feeling he has, but he can't really put his finger on why he's feeling that. Oh well, doesn't matter to him though. He's glad that he actually finally got to formally meet Gohan, and also save him, as well as meeting Goku. Goku does ask Yulong if one day they could fight, and Yulong says he's gonna have to train a lot first, but yeah, he'd be up for that. Yulong returns to Kame House, and Goku immediately begins to train more and more, wanting to grow as strong as he can as quickly as he can. And after some time, he eventually shows up at Kame House, having made a journey here just to train under Roshi. He knew that Yulong was here too, and he tells Yulong the whole reason he's here is so that he could fight him one day. Goku hopes Roshi could train him to be as strong as Yulong is. But at the very least, Gohan thinks it's a good idea that he comes here, so that's why he came here. He's already trained a good bit with Grandpa Gohan, and Roshi does know that he's powerful too. And especially after what Yulong told him about Goku transforming into a giant monkey, Roshi sees some sort of an opportunity here, and Roshi thinks he would be a good fit for the Turtle School. Although it's pretty weird because now the Turtle School has two really unique students, and without Roshi knowing, both are aliens who are interconnected. What Cooler never realized is that fate might be working against him. His younger brother ended up surviving and ended up here on Earth. And now, one of the Saiyans ended up surviving, one that Cooler didn't know was still alive. He's here on Earth too, with Kakarot and Frieza now crossing paths. Only this time, it's Goku and Yulong. Gohan even gave Goku his keepsake, the four-star Dragon Ball. Weirdly enough, Goku doesn't even realize that the other two around him, they have Dragon Balls too. Now there's three at Kame House. Which means at some point, Bulma definitely would go there because she sees three Dragon Balls in one spot. When she starts her search for the Dragon Balls, this is the place she begins at. At first, Yulong's a bit concerned because the Red Ribbon Army came after him for the Dragon Balls before. He never really cared too much about gathering all of them himself and summoning Shenron, but he's known about them for a while. Bulma explains what she's up to, and Yulong really has no interest in joining her, but Goku actually wants to go along. He explains how he already knew of the Dragon Balls and how he came across one too after he started making headlines. As well as the fact that some army came after him when he was in possession of it, which kind of freaks Bulma out because she thinks that army's gonna come after her too. But Yulong says not to worry. He single-handedly defeated the army. That's even more terrifying. This guy took out the entire army himself. Well, at least she'll have Goku going on the way with her. Yulong says he'll give her the Dragon Ball if she's able to collect all the others. That'll be his condition for giving it to her. Same for the Dragon Ball Roshi has since Roshi actually gave it to Yulong to keep. So Bulma goes on her journey with Goku. Yulong's relatively uninvolved, and when they come across Ox King, Roshi's there to lend a hand. They end up beating Yamcha too, and the Pilaf Gang comes after them as well. But thankfully with Goku having a head start in his training, the Pilaf Gang isn't really an issue at all. He was already terrifying to deal with before, and now he's even more powerful. This leads to them being captured by the Pilaf Gang like normal. And when Yulong senses Goku transforming, he realizes there's an issue. So quickly he flies over there, stopping Goku and stopping the Pilaf Gang with the Pilaf gang even more terrified at how strong this guy is. But now they have all the Dragon Balls, so Bulma makes her wish. And since she's already met Yamcha, instead of wishing for a boyfriend, she goes with the Strawberry Wish, summoning Shenron at Kame House, which is an incredible sight to see. She's glad to have met everyone, but now she goes off on her own, with Goku returning to Kame House to train. He's growing as a fighter really quickly, and Yulong's interested to see this. He does wonder if Goku can ever get control over that giant monkey form he has, because it is still pretty dangerous. Both times he transformed, Yulong had to be the one to stop it. Either Goku needs to prevent that from happening in the first place, or he needs to figure out how to control it, if there even is a way to control it at all. As Goku continues training at Kame House, eventually another student arrives, Krillin. Given Goku's head start, he's way ahead of Krillin. But still, it's nice for him to have a rival that's actually on his level, and not just Yulong, who's way above everybody. This'll be good for him, especially because they plan on entering the next world tournament. The concerns Roshi had with Yulong have passed. It seems now he finally has some sort of interest in training and fighting again. Even though he's already achieved the ultimate level of strength, something about Goku was able to encourage him again. And at least for Goku, Roshi's glad to know that Goku will always have someone stronger than him, a level that he could always strive for. The power is never going to get to his head too much because Yulong will always be above him. But still, he wonders how this tournament will go. And just because Goku encourages him, Yulong participates in this tournament too. Roshi doesn't enter as Jackie Chun either. It's just Yulong there. Goku and Krillin perform very well on their own, and they even end up fighting each other. But Goku's the one who makes it to the finals, facing off against Yulong. He knows Yulong's way stronger than him, but he's not going to back down just because of that. The two of them have a real battle. Yulong holds back a lot just to drag it out and see what Goku's capable of. He could end this with one hit if he wanted, but he decides to have some fun. 
heavily suppressing his power, allowing Goku to actually have some fun himself too, and to teach him along the way. And you know, even though he's holding back a lot, he's having a lot of fun with this. It's been a while since he's had fun with fights. Actually, he's never really had fun with fights at all. He's always been so much above his opponents that he never really could enjoy it like that. Of course, he still is heavily above his opponent here, but still, this battle's actually fun. There's meaning to this for him. This also eventually leads to Goku becoming a great ape again. But instead of instantly knocking him out, Yulong basically protects everybody else from Goku, trying to see if he can control this form somehow. And there is a brief moment where it looks like Goku is able to control it, but it's fleeting. So, reluctantly, Yulong has to knock him out anyways, and he ends up winning the tournament like this. And this time, the moon doesn't get blown up either, which is also a huge plus. Once more, he's the world champion. Although everyone's pretty impressed with that Goku kid because he seemed really powerful in his own, and he seemed to know Yulong somewhat. Since the Red Ribbon Army is already defeated, there's no Red Ribbon Army arc either. So, after this tournament, we could basically skip right to the 22nd World Tournament. And not much is going to change with it because Yulong decides to not enter this time. This is a huge shock to everyone, but it also makes sense because he's already so far above them. Although the people who set up the tournament do ask if he could face whoever wins the tournament. So instead of him just decimating everybody, it gives people a chance and it still lets him fight at the end. And he ends up agreeing to this. He's not officially part of the tournament, but he's going to basically be a final challenger for whoever ends up winning. This is also his first introduction to the Crane School, also eventually leading to a fight between Goku and Tenshinhan. But thankfully this time for Goku, he actually is able to beat Tenshinhan. Thanks to his head start and the fact that he's been training under Yulong a bit, he's grown significantly in power and technique. Plus, the fact that he hasn't been living like a wild animal in the woods. Gohan's alive still. He's had a lot of good influences around him. And he ends up taking home his first world tournament. He's elated, but he still has to fight against Yulong. But strangely enough, Yulong's nowhere to be found. Not long after this match, Yulong's preparing to fight against Goku again. He goes to check up on Krillin, and he sees that Krillin's being attacked by somebody. Tambourine's there. Instantly, he's on high alert, and with no effort at all, Yulong protects Krillin, defeating Tambourine with one hit. Krillin's not only amazed to see his power once more, but relieved that Yulong was able to get here in time and protect him. Yulong has no clue who this monster is, but he's not going to lay a hand on any of his friends. But he doesn't kill Tambourine, because he asks about who he is and what he's here for. Tambourine's terrified, and Yulong's able to get the info out of him. He tells Krillin to wait here, and if anyone's concerned about him missing, tell them he'll be right back. He's going to take care of this, and then he'll come back and finish this tournament. Tambourine then tries to escape, with everyone at the tournament witnessing it too. He also tries to take an opportunity to attack somebody else, but Yulong's able to stop him once more, taking hold of him and asking him to lead him to where his leader is. Yulong's able to track down King Piccolo thanks to Tambourine's help, realizing that the Pilaf gang is part of this too. Great, these guys again. He single-handedly defeats King Piccolo and all of his sons. And before he's about to destroy King Piccolo, there's a voice in his head telling him to wait and to not kill King Piccolo. This is weird, and of course, he's not going to trust it right away. Someone telling him to spare the enemy? This guy's trying to go around and kill all the World Tournament contestants. And with the Pilaf gang being involved, he's probably after the Dragon Balls as well. Why would he spare this guy? But the voice in his head tries to calm him down, quickly explaining who he is. The person he's hearing right now, it's the Guardian of Earth, Khan. The one who created the Dragon Balls, and one whose life is linked with King Piccolo. He'd like to talk with Yulong, but he can't necessarily do that if he kills King Piccolo. Although, if Yulong has some sort of way to seal him, that might be a good solution. Actually, now that he's thinking about it, Yulong realizes that he's heard about King Piccolo before. He heard about King Piccolo from Roshi once, although it was in passing. The only reason he knows about this is because Roshi told him about King Piccolo when he was teaching him this specific technique, because it was used against him. A sealing technique. Perfect. Piccolo, of course, is terrified beyond belief because, first of all, this guy one shot at him and all of his sons. And on top of that, now he's talking with Kami. And to make things even worse, Yulong then takes a stance that Piccolo's familiar with. It's one he saw a while ago when he was sealed away. Yulong's about to use the Mafuga on him and he pulls it off effortlessly, once more sealing King Piccolo away, stopping him before he's able to ever do anything, which also means that there's no Piccolo Jr. here either, and Kami gets to survive too, which is a nice plus. Kami says he'll meet with Yulong soon enough, and thanks him for taking that route. He's been wanting to meet with him, but wasn't sure when the right time was. Yulong returns to the tournament. Thankfully, not too much time has passed, and the extra match can finally begin, Yulong versus Goku. Of course, Goku ends up losing once more, but still, this time he does a lot better, and Yulong gets to enjoy the fight as well, Seeing how much Goku's grown in the past few years, he has been training with him and has trained him a bit himself too. But being on the other end of it and actually fighting him, that's a different thing. And it's only fitting that Goku's the one to end his streak of winning world tournaments. Although, he still is undefeated. He just didn't enter this one. Not that he cares about that status anyways. After everyone's about to leave the tournament, this is when Kami appears, finally getting to meet Yulong and Goku as well. He's been watching both of them. He's seen many great things from them, watching them throughout their tournaments. And especially after Yulong defeated King Piccolo, also, without killing him, he at least owes Yulong some sort of help, telling Yulong that he actually lives above Korin's tower. If they kept climbing up, or flying up, that's where they'd find Kami's lookout. Although, he's not too sure if he could teach Yulong much. For other people, he'd be really beneficial as a teacher, but 
Yulong's been practicing martial arts for years. Of course, he could learn some things from Kami, but Kami says he'd probably only be there a really short time. From what he's seen, Yulong's already a master of all martial arts, and his power is incredible as is. But still, he could tell Yulong has some sort of power locked away. He's not sure exactly what, but he'd like to see what that is, so even if he can't necessarily teach him anything new, he might be able to at least guide Yulong in the right direction. Plus, he could at least train Goku too. And Yulong finds this interesting. If Kami's been watching him, why wait until now? Well, he wanted to see how much he's grown as a warrior. Also, he wanted to learn more about Yulong's character. Clearly, he is a good person and worthy of training up there. But Yulong has another question. If Kami's been watching him all that time, does he know anything about Yulong's origin? And Kami says he doesn't necessarily know much. If he asked Ken Kai, he might have known something. But all he knows is that one day, Yulong landed on Earth. He can't say with certainty that Yulong isn't from this planet, which Yulong kind of already suspected. Roshi told him that a while ago. He just fell out of the sky one day. And that's exactly why he thinks Yulong has something else locked away. They know nothing about him. He's not human, which probably explains the insane strength he has. But they don't even know why he ended up here in the first place, especially because he ended up here injured. Kami wonders if they'll be able to get to the bottom of that together, but he kind of doubts it. But at the very least, he wants to make an attempt to unlock that power that he has locked away. Because just by looking at him up close, he could tell. Yulong's not at his full strength yet. This isn't his peak. It might seem like it is, but it isn't. It's almost like there's power suppressed within there that he doesn't realize is there. Kami wants to take them both as students. Goku because he kind of needs the training, and Yulong because they want to figure out more about him. And just like he wants to tap into whatever power Yulong has, Goku can also try and finally control that great ape form he has. So with the tournament over, the two of them go to train under Kami. Meanwhile, deep out in space, Cooler's rule over everything continues. There are still a couple Saiyans in his army, Vegeta, Nappa, and Raditz. And after all this time, Raditz is wondering, is Kakarot still out there somewhere? They could probably recruit him. One day they'll have to go and find him and see if he'll join their ranks. Who knows, maybe with his help, the Saiyans will grow strong enough to defeat Cooler. It's kind of a long shot, but still, worth noting. And with that, we leave off here for now. What'd you guys think about this part, and what's gonna happen next time? Leave your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys think. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel and shows me you want to see more like this. Anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.